To help you learn more about site events and other tools available to you to debug, we're going to take a look at an example website that I built on Velo. Coffee Tracker is a website that I built in order to keep track of how many cups of coffee you drink a day. Although this website is fun, we're going to learn some powerful features that will help you debug any business needs for sites built on Velo. When you built your first website on Velo, you most likely noticed that we have a preview function on the top. When you click on this button, you can actually see something called the Developer Console. The Developer Console allows you to see any JavaScript console.log messages. You can actually see uh, messages that come from the back end and the front end. So let's take a look at what happens for when I click my coffee cup. You can see that I chose to write two console.log messages and you can see it down here on the developer console. There's some advantages to using side events and we're going to talk about those later on. Uh, this developer console is kind of similar to the inspector tool in your favorite web browser. So when you right click on your Wix website, click inspect and go to the console you can see that the same two messages appear in your regular browser's console. So you may be wondering, if I can see front-end and back-end console.log messages inside of the preview window, why should I use site events? So we're going to take a look at a specific situation that can apply to many situations when you're debugging your website on Velo to show you the power of site events. When coding your website on Velo, you may want to check for errors on the site preview feature. However, depending on how you wrote your code, certain issues can only be debugged through your live website. This is especially true for bugs related to logged in users as the preview feature does not track who is currently logged in. Coffee Tracker counts your clicks using a user account. This is done through the Wix members app. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first log in and then hit sign up with Google. You can see that once you're logged in, there's an error currently. So it says coffee drank today undefined cups. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the page, hit inspect, hit console. And the errors that we see on here are much like the errors that we would see in preview. But in this case, since we need to log in, we're doing the debugging on the live website. So when I hit the coffee cup, you can see that it says back end amount of coffees undefined. So this means something's wrong with our back end, but we don't really see an error for it. Let's see if what went wrong is visible in our code. Taking an initial look, you can see that I created an on-click event handler for the coffee icon button. Whenever it is clicked, it attempts to insert a row into the content collections I created. As a reminder, content collections is Velo's integrated database solution. This is done in the front end JavaScript so that the inserted row could be associated to the user that is currently logged in. As a result, when a logged in user clicks on the coffee cup, a row is inserted with an auto-generated column titled owner, which uniquely associates each click with a particular user. After inserting a new row, which represents the user drinking a new cup of coffee, the function coffee clicked is called. This is a function that is called from the backend web modules. We know that collection row returns something. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check out the coffee clicked function. To do that, we're going to have to check out the backend modules. So to do that, we're going to click code files, uh, click coffee clicked. And here we can see the coffee clicked function. So the actual purpose of this function is in order to return the amount of coffees that the person has drank. So the way it does that is it counts the amount of rows inside of the data collections. So by looking at this code right now, you may be able to see where the error is coming from. But what we're going to do is we're going to use side events to see how we can solve this bug efficiently. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to reproduce the bug that we saw earlier in order to see where side events can actually help us. So I'm going to click view site and I'm going to open the inspector tool. So I'm going to click inspect. I'm going to click console and already you can see that it says coffee drank today undefined. And when I click on it, it says back end amount of coffees undefined. So again, by looking at it in the inspector tool, we can't really see where the bug is coming from. And this is where site events comes in. 
So I'm going to go back. And what we're going to do now is we're going to click developer tools. And then we're going to click side events. So once this is loaded, what we're going to do is we're going to click the coffee on the actual web page and then see if anything else is displayed here. So we're going to go back to the web page and we're going to click on the coffee again. And you can see that here it says amount of coffee is undefined. But if we go to the side events, it says WDE0025, the coffee collection does not exist. So right away, this error is something that we didn't previously see um, on the inspect tool. So right away, we know that we misspelled the name of the collection. And if we change that, we can actually see if we fix the bug. So let's go back and let's edit from coffee tracker with three E's to coffee tracker with two E's. And let's save. And then after we save, we're going to publish it to make it go to the live website. And what I'm going to do next is go back to the Wix website, hard refresh the website so that way nothing that's cached shows on the page. And you can see immediately that it, now it says coffee drank today is zero cups. And when I click it, now it says one cup. And you can see that in the inspect tool, it correctly displays the amount of coffees that were previously drank. So since it was zero, it became one and it's now one. So just like that, we use site events to fix our page efficiently. Site events is also useful for spotting content collection permissions errors. For example, if our collection was set to read only permission and we tried to insert a row from a backend module, we would get a silent error. However, if we looked at site events, we can immediately spot the error message from the backend module and change the permissions to allow write access. If you want to learn more about collection permissions, check out one of our past videos by my colleague Anthony on this topic. In conclusion, Site Events is a powerful developer tool available on Velo that can help you debug the trickiest of issues. There are other great developer tools available to you, such as monitoring. Monitoring allows you to see how many total backend requests were made on your site. You can also check out Google Operations to see more aggregate data regarding your website. Thank you for watching this episode of Vibe with Velo. I hope you were able to learn something new that will help you unlock the power of our platform. If you have any questions or would like a certain topic covered in one of our next videos, let us know in the comments below. Until next time.